Hello YouTube, thought I'd do a quick video here. The other day, I posted a video about me possibly building a DTMF interface board. Now, for those of you who are new to this video, or new to my channel, I'll post that video link down below. But what this DTMF interface board will do, by using a radio, whether it's a mobile or a handheld, you can punch in codes to activate certain functions. So with, so with that being said, a question was asked, can we use a weather alert weather radio so that if I punch in a code, let's say number one, it plays using the weather alert radio it plays the local weather over the repeater and I said well I don't know we're going to, have to modify the weather radio because there's no jacks uh, that you know Midland don't give you jacks for that so we got to modify the weather radio and it's very easy to do it's four screws and two wires. That's it. It's very easy to do. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this in a minute. But before I get into this, I want to explain a couple things first. First off, by modifying it, it will not, it will not affect how the radio performs. Secondly, before you modify, if you're going to go buy a new weather alert radio, I recommend... What you do first is you buy it from Amazon because you can always send it back if it doesn't work the way you want it. This weather alert radio does not use internet. It does not use a computer. It uses a frequency or an RF or a radio frequency that transmits the local weather and weather alerts in your area. You look up on NOAA's uh, website what your frequency is in your area and you program this weather alert radio to that frequency. Now, you got to be able to receive it for this to work. So I always tell people is when you get your weather alert radio, plug it in with the built-in antenna. I had this off and I'll explain why in a minute. Try with your built-in antenna and see how well you receive it. If it sounds somewhat decent, then you don't need an external antenna. There is a jack on this radio to plug an external antenna. I have to use an external antenna because I live in the worst possible place in the in the world for weather for to receive any type of radio stuff so I built a J pole it didn't cost me nothing I had the steel rod here and I had a coax here I built a J pole and it works really good you may need to have an external antenna if you're receiving the weather it's really staticky because keep in mind when you're dealing with radio repeaters whatever however this sounds is how it's going to sound over your repeater. If you got static in, you're going to have static out. So check that before you do all this. So uh, now I want to mention that. The second thing I want to mention is this modification is only to hear the weather. It does not do weather alerts notifications over the repeater. I have a separate board for that. I'll post that link down below if that's something you're interested in. All this modification does is it's we're going to tap into this switch right here. Now, if you're not familiar with how this radio works, this modification is only for this model of radio, which is the Midland WR120, I believe. This radio, once you program your frequency and your county and all your information, if you want to hear your local weather as it's happening and forecast you press this switch and you can hear it over the built-in speaker and then when you're done you press it again to turn it off I want access to that switch I want it so that I can plug in a cable so I can make that switch work without me pushing it physically pushing it that's what this modification is for so if that's something you want to do because you want to make your own, you want to tinker, or you just, you know, want to do it just because in the future you may want to do something with it. All you got to do is really simple. There's four screws you got to remove in the back of the radio. Take your batteries out. 
there's going to be screw here in this corner, a screw in this corner, and there is two screws underneath these rubber little feet. So what you got to do, the rubber feet are like this. You got to get a, a sharp object, pry up the rubber carefully so you can re-put it back on. And you got to do this side. Remove those four screws, and now your cover comes off. Okay? That's all you got to take off. You got to take nothing else more off. The terminals we're going to use to give us access or to hook to that switch are going to be. And what I'm going to do is I took a picture of this board. I'm going to post a link to it in the description below. And the picture will have arrows to these spots so you can see it even better than in this video. But I marked them with a black marker for this video. There's one here. And there's one here in this middle one. This middle one's ground. And this one up here is the switch. So how do I know that's the switch? How do I know? Well, once I found the spots on the board, I took a metal tweezers. And if I touch it once, touch it once, it turns the radio on. If I touch it again, it turns it off. Just like it is when you hit the button on the front. So what we're going to do is, you can do this different ways. You can take a jack. You can buy these jacks. I had this one for another project. I'm going to drill a hole, mount my jack here. I'm going to run a wire from here to the jack, and then one from the ground to the jack. Now I can plug in a cable to be able to do this to switch. Or if you don't want to do that, you can drill a hole and have two wires coming out. Whatever choice you want to do. While you got it apart, if you don't want to hear it over the speaker, I would put in a switch to turn the speaker off. You cut one wire, you drill a hole, get a little toggle switch, solder one, wire to the one side of the switch, the other another side switch. That way you can turn off the speaker. You're probably wondering why would I want to do that. If you're going to have this weather alert in a repeater room that's in a building, remember, when you press this button here, it turns it on so you can hear it over the speaker. Well, maybe you don't want it playing over the speaker when this is in your repeater room. So by adding a switch, you can turn off just the speaker when you want to. So I suggest you do the, the switch for the speaker at the same time. There's plenty of room here to put a switch on both sides. Uh, I even looked on this cover. There's plenty of room. So you can, you can do it. What I'd probably do is put this together first, put the screws in there, and then figure out where my switch is. Probably put my switch probably down in here. Down in here. In this, uh, down in this area. Just make sure there's nothing in the way. So, you know, you have to kind of figure out where you want it. Make sure you have enough length so you can, you know, put the cover back on. But nevertheless, you can use a switch. Or maybe, I don't recommend you just cutting the speaker wire because you do want to be able to test your weather radio at some point. And if you just cut the, the wire, you're not going to hear it when you press that button out here. So don't, don't do that. Either leave it alone or put a switch in it. So now, if you want to know, and that's all for that modification, you do not have to take the board completely out. I had to to find these spots on the board. So that's why my antenna's unhooked. Don't have to do that. You only got to take the cover off, solder two wires, that's it. So now, if you want to know how did I figure out this without no schematic and all that good stuff. Well, it's not that difficult. Now, Midland had to make it a little challenging, of course. Normally, a normal switch will have terminals. When you put a switch in a board, you have terminals that you solder to, and you can easily solder wires to it. Well, Midland didn't do that with these switches that does the menu, that does that uh, monitor switch. They use a circuit, I call it a, a PCB switch. There's probably a fancy word for these switches, but they're a pain in the ass is what they are. Because there's no terminal coming off the other end that I can solder wires to. I have to find it on the board. So what you do for future, these, these, this switch is a piece of tape that has metal disc on it. So what I did, this switch actually has two switches. 
They both do the same thing. I picked one of them. I took a razor blade. Remember, this is tape. I took a razor blade and carefully got underneath the tape to lift that up. And I could put more clear tape on it. Then I lifted this up and that exposed the switch. Now, it's hard to see because of my lighting, but the switch consists of two contact points. Outer ring, which is ground, and the middle is the switch. How do I know it's ground? Because I took my ohm meter and I touched it from the outer ring and I found a ground point on this board. And I touched it to a ground point. And then same with the center, which is the switch. So put my ohmmeter on there. I found it on the board. The first spot I found was this little plate through that's way too small to solder to. So then I started probing the board. And by experience, I kind of knew when you start seeing these rolls of connectors, sometimes they use that when they program, uh, they'll have like a, and they, they'll put some on there to, to do programming of a chip. So that's what these spots may be for. But nevertheless, you, I don't you know, to solder on this little itty bitty one would be a pain. So I found a better spot, and that's the one up here. And like I said, the ground, I used my meter. I found a ground spot, and I found a bigger spot here. I'll post a picture of this board with this you know spot so you can see it better. So that's how... You do that. It's you know, if you want, if you need to track it down, that's the best way to do it without, uh, you know, tearing off the, the the tape to 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 do that. You can just quickly use a you know, use a razor blade get underneath that tape and lift it up. So when I get done now, I will put more tape on that spot and I'll put all of it back together. But you guys don't need to take it apart that far. You just need to worry about these two spots. So now, once you get that, you can either drill a hole, have two wires come out, or a jack, or however way you want to do it. Now, once that's done, now with my switch for my speaker, I can flip the switch, turn off the speaker if I don't want to hear it out loud, or I can leave the switch on. When I press the button, I'll hear the weather. So with that jack being there or the wires coming out, now we can we can hook up a circuit that will press that button for us. So now if I build a little circuit for my DTMF board, now when I punch in a code, you know, number one, it's going to take my DTMF board, it's going to send a, 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 a logic information to my little circuit that's going to... Uh, be hooked up to the to the switch or to the jack on here. That's going to act like it's pushing this button. It's going to do that and key up a radio, and I can hear my weather, my local weather. Now, since the radio is being keyed up, we can't tone in to turn it off. So I'm going to have this circuit be on a timer, an adjustable timer that I can adjust with a screwdriver from one minute to, to five minutes. So I can have it play for three minutes, one minute, two minutes, four minutes, and then it will automatically shut off, and it will unkey the radio, and life is good. Now I'm ready to do another, another code for whatever function I want to do next. So if you want to build your own, you could use like a relay and then have it controlled. Um, the relay, you'd have the contacts of the relay normally open, and then you would have your relay coil, and that would hook up to whatever device you want to try to, to do that with. Then you have to make a PTT circuit for the for the radio. But nevertheless, you'll have those wires there so you can do this modification to have this feature. Now, this will only do the local weather announcements. It will not do weather alerts with this modification. I have a board already for that. If you want to watch that video, I'll post that link down below. So, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. Please subscribe. Thank you and have a good day.